The following is a fan-based discussion. All properties discussed are property of Toei Inc., Bandai, Hasbro, and Subarai Productions. I don't know what episode this is. I'm not super worried about it. Uh, today we're talking about some anniversaries. We're talking about two shows that I quite like very much that had their 10-year anniversaries recently in the form of movies. Kamen Rider O's, Kaizuk Sentai, Gokaija. Yeah. Oh, We're going to talk about those first. We're going to talk about the O's one first. And I I want to bring up a text I sent to you. Because I want to I want to say my words exactly. Do, 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 la la la. Okay. Um so I said uh when I, when I first started watching it, um it was it was a Wednesday afternoon. I said, "Just started watching the 10th anniversary O's movie. Going to watch Gokaiger after it." And you said, "Can't wait for your reactions." And I said, Best word I can use it to describe it so far is sad. Another word would be pathetic. And then you laughed. And then I said, this is like watching the Defunct Land video about Toys R Us. Something I used to love, now a shell of its former self before fading into the wasteland of time. <laughs> and my final text regarding it was... I don't know what my most hated Common Rider movie was before watching this, but now it's this. So that pretty much sums up how I feel about the O's movie. You can tell <clears throat> it's not written by... Uh, no, it actually a is. A it's human. written by one of the three writers, the main writers for the show, but it's not by Kobayashi. Uh, I... Doesn't matter. In the end of the day, it doesn't matter because they did a horrible job. This movie... Was garbage. I was visibly upset by the end of it. I remember it, it ended, the credits were rolling, and I was like, what the hell just happened? And just a whole bunch of awful <sighs> I don't even know where to begin, because I don't even really we, want to talk about I, the story. I, I kind of do. I want to start at the beginning, where I'm, I am a believer that you should always judge art by what it is, not by what you wanted it to be or what you think it should be. But this movie, I mean, not, not but, I am going to talk about what it is. It's like, this movie feels like there is about 40 minutes missing. Yeah, I think it, this movie needs about an extra the, half to The way hour. the movie opens, where it's like, Ankh's, uh, you know, he's just a hand again. He's floating in space in the ether, and he just kind of comes back into existence. And the world is a bombed out hellscape. Everything is destroyed, and I'm like, oh my god. God, what happened? And then we see, uh, we, we see like all our like returning cast is there. Like there's Hina, there's the brother, there's Kyoko, there's uh, Date, there's uh, Goto. Goto, thank you. Uh, the, the second birth. And they all show up with a bunch of resistance fighters armed with machine guns. And, they, and then the Greed show up. And already I'm like, oh, but, but why though? And then King O shows up. And then King O shows up. Ooh, buddy. This movie is terrible fan fiction. Agreed. And I say terrible fan fiction because fan fiction is like anything. There's good and there's bad. But this is like truly the like bottom of the barrel. I'm going to take the characters that I like and I'm going to write them in a story that I think is really cool. And not even, like, in the so bad is good, like that one Harry Potter fan fiction, My Immortal. I know what you're talking about. The, the best thing you've ever seen ever. It's not... I know exactly it's, what you mean. It's not The Room. It's just bad. Because it doesn't go from so bad it's good. It, it doesn't... It doesn't make... Cause it doesn't make the loop. The thing, the thing with so bad it's good is it has to feel like there is good intentions behind it. Yeah. Where it's like the, the creators, they feel like... We are making a true masterpiece here. Oh, hi, We're Johnny. I didn't recognize you. He looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> and that. this movie, it feels like nobody's heart was in it. No, every, it every performance, Shu Watanabe just feels like he wants to walk off set and go to sleep. I agree. And just every, every performance is like, is a flat line. There's no emotion. There's no oomph. The, the emotions that are supposed to be... Man emotional they just feel manipulative yeah and 
the story is also just stupid. Agreed. It, it's like, okay, so what? why did we have to do this? It's like, well, drama. We have to create drama for this movie. And to do that, we're going to go darkest timeline. The, fir- the first king is back. We tried to create another greed, but that didn't work. And he looks like AG for some reason. And oh man, well, that isn't so much he looks like AG because they tried What's to make it from his desires. Yeah, and then it just ends up possessing AG. Yeah, because AG dies before the movie starts, more or less. Yeah, more or less. And that's I mean, the end of this movie. So the end of this movie is AG. He knows. Canon death. He dies. They kill A.G. Hino. Common Rider owes a character that I grew to love for so many episodes is dead. Now, that inherently itself is not a bad thing. No. Because if this movie had been... Better. Had been better, <laughs> had been longer, had been more fleshed out, had not been, you know, the pile of steaming trash that it is, like... I don't have a problem with them killing that character off. If if that's how Shu Watanabe and the creative team like want this character to have his exit, like he's like, all right, I'm I'm old enough now where I don't feel like I want to come back to play O's again after this special. Let's let's give him a heroic death. Let's give him a heroic sacrifice death. If they if that's what they wanted to do, then that's fine. But they make the heroic death happen in a flashback. It hap- it it not only happens in a flashback, but then at the end of the movie, when his friends are gathered around him and he passes away and Ankh closes his eyes, and then we cut to him just like standing in a different shot, different time of day, staring off into the middle distance with Hina just kind of like awkwardly standing behind him, and then he's like, AG. And then we cut to the end credits and AG's underpants are blowing in the wind against the bombed out rubble like it's the flag at Iwo Jima. And then the Sarah McLaughlin cover of Anything Goes comes on. I... Th- that was the... Like, I... That was the moment where it truly solidified, I hate this more than any other Kamen Rider movie. It's just funny hearing from some of the people in Japan, especially from Taka. Okay. Who is a Japanese guy, but he re- releases his videos in English. Yeah. Um, people walked out. <laughs> Which is crazy to me. <laughs> people walked people out. People walked out of the movie theater. And people said, this is bad fan fiction. This is, you know, one of the worst things they see. Pretty much all the things that you said. All the things we've said, yeah. And I'm just like, wow, is it that bad? And then I watched it and decided, yes. Yeah, and then I watched it and I was like, you know what? The only thing that is missing that would really put the cherry on top, and Preg. It's the only thing that's really missing from this. Honestly, that would have been enough for me. <laughs> it would have been, I mean, it could have been. If if that scene at the end of Ankh staring into the middle distance, instead, like, the camera pans down and he's clutching his pregnant belly as he says, AG, our, you sacrificed yourself so that our child could have a better future. And I'm sitting here and, like, and if that's how the movie I feel, ended, I feel that, like people wouldn't have walked out. That, that, would, that would have been a higher note. They were just like, you know what? You know what? Yes. Right, you know what? Yes. All right. All right. Yes. I yeah, approve. Why not? Um, that's the only thing that's missing. I, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my. I feel like they could have done so much more with his greed. Yeah. Because I feel like the greed actually had a little bit of something going for him. Yeah. But then it got made into generic villain. I want to be powerful. Generic villain. I want to be powerful. And it's not a good performance. No. It's not a, a again. He seems checked out of the whole thing. Like speaking of people who were checked out, they yeah. freaked, the greeds came back, gone. Three yeah. seconds. They were yeah. on the screen for like a minute and a half. Uba had the most, and he had like an extra minute, and then he basically just dies. Yeah, it's kind of nice that we get some like again, like yeah, we get some human scenes with them in their human forms, like <laughs> human scenes, human scene. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like oh, it's kind of cool that they got those actors back, but they do nothing with them. It. Uh, uh, the king gets brought back by like some cult or something, but it's done in the most throwaway line that they could have oh done. My goodness. This. Kosei Kogami spends this whole movie sitting in a room with like a bunch of boxes stacked behind him. Did they run out of time and like forget and like not know what to do to decorate the set? So they were just like, boxes, 
Just put boxes behind him. Cover, covered in boxes. We can't use a green screen, so just put boxes behind him. It looks like he's just like sitting in the basement of an Amazon warehouse. Yeah. He and now works for Amazon. But not Ko- the, Ko- the Kogami. The Kogami Foundation got absorbed. Oh my god. This movie... And all he does in this whole movie is just... Is just do exposition dumps. Yeah, he does. He just sits there on on he. They call him in via Zoom, and he's like, "Allow me to tell you the plot." And it's just exposition dump after exposition dump. There's so many scenes of characters just explaining things, and the things that they're explaining are dumb. This movie needed at least another thirty minutes to an hour. I agree because it they condense so much into exposition dumps. It's just like I can't appreciate. Anything that's going on, because I'm just being told. Mm. All this stuff happened in the past. Here's all the stuff that happened between the time that Ankh wasn't here and now he's here again. Yep. And I'm just like, this is how you're going to bring him back? It, you basically just made them switch places. Yeah, pretty much. And no kiss. I was upset at that. How dare that? <laughs> I was here like, we were all waiting for him. We were rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. Oh, well. Win some, you lose some. Trash. This Trash. movie is- Awful. This movie is trash. Oh my god. Ugh. It, it just upsets me. It, it does. And I don't even like O's that much. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. That's what it, it's, it's, it's a show that I've definitely cooled off on in recent years. I don't like it anywhere near as much as I used to, but... It's, it's, it's still a good show. I still think it's worth a watch, but this movie just... Wow. Trash. It is. It's the worst. Shall we move on? To Tengu Kaiser. To Kaiser Kusentai Tengu Kaiser. Now, we sort of have different opinions on this. We do. Because I actually like this movie. You did. I thought it was fun. And I'm, I think... Uh, most That's mostly because it's, it's Kaiser. I don't think it's like the magnum opus or anything. But I still think it's Fair just enough. a fun show. And I think this movie is just a fun way to you know, get to where we are now 10 years later. Mm-hmm. I think this movie is not... I don't think it's awful. I didn't like it. But it definitely has its moments. What didn't you like about it? Uh, what I didn't like about it? Yeah, that's right uh, there. Okay. Um, like the O's movie, I felt like it was too short. And, yeah, that's, I, that's and I really didn't like how the story was told. The actual story itself, like... It, it does the same thing that superhero Tyson does, the first movie, where it's like... We have the heroes are fighting amongst each other, but then at the end we were, but then like right at, right before the final battle we reveal actually we were not fighting each other. It was a ruse, and I didn't like that. I don't think they did that here. They they pretty much do. It's, and I think that the way that you're saying that is because so the Gokai Island gets blown up. Because th- that's how the movie starts. Is like the smoldering wreckage of the Gokai Galleon yeah. with Joe looking at it. And Marvelous and the others are back on Earth because Marvelous tracked down the the persons responsible yeah. to Earth and finds out that using uh, Bosco's trumpet, they like uh, organization has been putting on like super sentai battles yeah. to reinvigorate the economy because it's sort it, of like a betting system yeah. that they have. And I sort of like how that's set up. It's a very interesting way to be like, all right, so we're sort of doing this to fund the world's defense system. But Yeah, and the defense system is like powered by the keys themselves. Yeah. Powered by the Ranger keys. And also, you know, just a straight up money for building the defense system. Which were system. all stolen from the Go Kaijers. Yeah, because Guy got them and gave them, well, he got all the keys again. Yeah. Because they did get them back at the end of the show. Like, right. As we saw in Zuoger, if they ask, they'll give it to him. Yeah. So that's All I have to do here. is say please. Yeah. So that's what they did here. And guys have been using that to reinvigorate, you know, just pump more money back into the world. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, you know what? I like this plan. Because it deals with, strangely enough, real world economics. Mm-hmm. Just like my favorite episode of Battle Fever when they took over Japan's uh, fishing economy. I still think that's one of the best episodes since I've ever done, just because it's just so intricate. Interesting. But so easily done, and I love it. Um... For this movie had a lot of wasted potential for me, and a lot of it comes down to the way the story is told. Again, I think it's an interesting concept and where it ends up. I would have liked it so much more if this had been like 
how cool would it have been to see the Ocean's Eleven version of a Sentai? I really, really hate it. This is a trope that's not exclusive to Sentai. We see it a lot. Where, like, in between a previous adventure and the next adventure, the team has broken up. Which is sort of what they did here. And they and they do it off screen, and now everyone has just gone their separate ways. And I really hate that. It felt like, well, we need conflict in this. We need conflict and we need drama. How can we do that? I know, we'll break the team up and we'll... You know, do this and break the team. Up. Which again, it comes back to they weren't. It was all a ruse. But how cool would it have been to see the Gokaiger version of the Stinger Ocean's Eleven, where we, where like, if I wanted to see the Gokai Galleon get blown up, I don't like that we open and that's just like the first shot of the movie. I would have, and I don't like that guy isn't a part of the team anymore. I, he's as much a part of the team as anyone else. I wish he had just stayed with them. Well, yeah, because he was the one who sort of got left around, left on Earth. I know, with but I, I wish they didn't do that. Which, again, judge it by what it is, not by what you wanted. But I would have loved, like, even if they did leave him behind on Earth, let's say they, you know, like, everything happens as is. But how cool would it have been to see Marvelous and crew plan this sting operation after the Galleon gets, like... They, like, Guy is on Earth, he's doing his own thing, he, and he's, you know, helping this corporation out with the, with the energy source and whatnot. Unintentionally working for the bad guys. Unintentionally working for the bad guys. And he gets a call from, from his old teammate, Captain Marvelous, with some bad news. The Gokai, Cal- the Gokai Galleon has been destroyed. And we know who did it. We need your help to get back at them. And they plan this operation. I would have loved to have seen that. Like, so we've got this idea for this, and this and this, and Guy, like, well, it sounds like you're going to need someone on the inside. Well, that's where you come in. I feel like, weirdly enough, it works better for me because it was the five of them who Mm -hmm. planned it, but they also needed him to be sort of an unintentional, I'm not going to say fall guy, but sort of an unintentional guy on the inside, because Mm -hmm. that's how they got uh, uh, Don, Doc, got uh, the transmitter onto the back of his key. Yeah. And gave it to Guy, mm-hmm. or rather, just give it to him. But no, uh, they fumbled the Gokai Silver Key, right. put the transmitter on the back of that, mm-hmm. and then that's how they listened in on the plans of the bad guys. Yeah, I sort of do love that. He sort of was a part of the plan, but unintentionally. Okay, um, I feel like I've said my piece on what I didn't like, so let's move on to the stuff I did like. The cameo by Mister Super Sentai as himself. And then seeing the fight of his two of his characters, two characters losing to Kenji Oma's characters, super, super and his reaction to that was really funny. I like that it's his co-commentator is Bosco's actor, yeah, playing a different character, but it's like, <laughs> and they make a little bit of a joke about it about his, how his name kind of sounds like Bosco, I like and that so uh, much. it's it was a fun little cameo. I liked that. I. One of the bad guys, was that Metal Yoshida from Kamen Rider Gaim? Yes, it was. I loved his look. <laughs> I love that one of our villains is just a big dude who they covered in, like, full body makeup from, like, his waist up. Yeah. And he's just covered in, like, blue and, like, green body paints. And it's really good makeup, too. Yeah. And once again, Metal Yoshida, great actor. And he really sells it. He's able to work with this character really well. And seeing him just in that makeup and on screen, just filling it with his presence is great. I still think one of my favorite parts was Lucas sort of betraying them. Mm -hmm. And then absolutely not doing that and coming in as the reporter. I thought that was the funniest part of this movie. Her as the reporter is so good. That that, that costume change, Sentai Girl costume change. And then uh, Ahim going to meet Takamichi. Mm -hmm. And then coming back with the rest, the new, uh, all the Reds came after. And then fighting the previous uh, teams in the new suits. Yep. I loved it. (laughs) I Um, loved the fight scenes in this. They were a lot of fun. uh, Guy's actor is Jacked. He is jacked. He as is hell. jacked out of his. They, they make they make it a couple of moments in this movie to just like because when he when he meets up with uh, Don again, it's like dang you you got a 
Junior Ikeda is his name. Thank they you. when they, they came back, this is sort of a behind the scenes. Yeah, thing. they said they're just like we tried to have them fit into their old suits, and he couldn't because he was too jacked. In the <laughs> in the during the credits, you see some like behind the scenes footage, and one of them is him just like flexing in his Sentai outfit. Yeah. yeah. That spandex looks like it is about to rip off of his body. Dude, just huge. He's it's 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 also because like he's not very tall. Like no, he's like the shortest member of the team. I yeah. think he's even shorter than Ahim is. Yes. And he's so like thick now. Yeah. And it's just like pure muscle on his body. Like, yes, this is the thickness I came here for. Like, my, like good on you, dude. That that takes extreme dedication. Good for you. He's out here just acting, being a dad, and I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's doing. The dad bod we all aspire. Yes, for. Jesus Christ, he, he just he's got to punch somebody. I mean, like, when was that photo taken? Because that's a that's you know like a like an Instagram this photo, is, and then uh, him in this is him in Gokaiju. This yeah. is him in um probably girl around the time Garo season three was shooting. Yeah. yeah, he's he is bulked up considerably. He punch you, and you would explode, and I'm just like, well, all right then. I guess that's that's the look we're going yeah. for, and I appreciate it. Jesus, this, I, this movie was fun. I, I will, I will, I will say another, fi- another marvelous thi- eye patch. It was cool to see marvelous with an eye patch. And, and it's a said, very small thing, but it's, but it's kind of cool to and, see and, that. And the postcard is like, "How'd you lose your eyes?" Like I didn't. I it just got. That's hit. right. <laughs> he's like, "Oh, I didn't," and he takes it off, and he's totally fine. <laughs> uh, what a doofus! And uh, one, I will say, one big advantage I think this has over the O's movie. The actors seem to care. They seem like they were having fun. Every, everyone seems to be having fun. And, and, you know, like in the behind the scenes, and they're all like laughing and they seem to be having a good time. And then you watch like, you watch like the countdown videos they did for the O's movie, where yeah. like they had the cast there like saying, you know, our movie's coming out. And they just look like they, they look like they want to be anywhere else. Yeah, they look a little dead in the face. Just like, I, I, I want to go home. Can I please go home? Because, like, I did watch the video of um, Juwa Nabe, AG's actor, giving Ryosuke Miyora, who plays Anka, a bouquet of flowers for his birthday. Like, that would felt like a genuine moment. They have a lot of chemistry. That was like a behind-the-scenes, you know, moment, sure, during their press tour. But, yeah, like, they have a lot of chemistry. Yeah. It really shows. And, like, you know, him showing up to give him flowers on his birthday and singing happy birthday to him and Ryusuke is getting very emotional about it. It's it's a very nice moment that happened in real life, so I'm glad we got that. Yeah. But the movie is terrible. Yeah, that, it, like I think this is the thing. And then you really... look at the behind the scenes for this movie, and everyone is just like smiling and having a great time, and they seem to be they seem to be so happy to get back in to play these characters again. And Captain Marvelous um, was doing a whole bunch of other stuff because he's showing up in the Zenkaiju versus Kiribati versus Senpaiju movie. Yeah, <laughs> so he's just on set right now. We all know Mao is just Captain. Good. Whenever there's a Toei took us out to production, Mao just shows up somewhere. Yep. Also, okay. Mao's in the uh, Sentai anime that you're watching this season. Oh, is she? Yeah, because if there's Sentai and it's an anime, she's voicing somebody. And there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, I, I wouldn't <laughs> doubt it. I mean, she, she's a she's a voice actress getting a lot of work, so good she's, for her. She's getting a lot of work. And we all know uh, Yuki Yamada, who plays Joe, is just really, really busy as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah... I think that that was really part of the reason why I just really enjoyed watching Tim Kaiser versus Dio's 10th anniversary. Because mm-hmm. you can really feel like there's something fun about this. There's there it looks like they're having fun. It looks like they're enjoying themselves. It's like they just get to act a little bit more crazy. I love the fact that the first person that we spent time with in this movie was actually Dawn. Mm-hmm. When he's going around and... Sorry, I'm trying to look up what character she plays. I think it's a cat or something. Anyway... Yeah, the O's, it's, it's just a disappointment. It's very generic. Yeah, she is the cat. Yeah. How about that? But Tango Good Kaiju, for you. Tango Kaiju is the one I definitely recommend, out of, especially out of these two. Really just, uh, it's not the Given highest, the choice between the two of them. <laughs> it's not the highest on my you know 10th anniversary movies, but I still really enjoyed Tango Kaiju. I just thought mm-hmm. it, was, it really embodied the fun that the show was having. Even the fi- the new final form that they have. I think there are mo. I, I, overall, I, d- I don't think I would recommend either one. But if you had to watch one, go with the Go Kaiju movie. Yeah, I still think it's fun. Listen to him for this one. Uh, next time. Uh, what are we doing? 
We're doing Tokusatsu Kakaka. People have been talking about it, and I sort of want to do something. I have no idea what that is. It, it's. <laughs> I've seen it mentioned in our comments a yeah. couple of times, but I never bothered to look up what it is. So we'll be. Doing so that I guess I'll time. find out. That that'll be uh, the next show that we do, and then we'll do a show Geki Goraigan, and then after that, uh, I'll decide what we're going to do after that before we get to Go Ranger and Rider. <laughs> but yeah, let us know what you thought about both of these in the comments below. And we'll see you next time. Don't forget to join us all for things. Bye, everybody. Thank you for watching.